this is so much fun. It, it, it's just wonderful. And so wonderful to see and be in the presence of so many old friends. Friends that for 40 years um, have shared energy together uh, and, um, and continue to spread the, spread the energy of what it is to be alive through music. Uh, at, um, and I want to thank you. And I also want to tell you about Dennis Russell Davies. It, um, it was wonderful to see him uh, um, embodied uh, virtually. Uh, <laughs> I, my, my task is to tell you about the very nascent days of the Composer's Forum, which I'm so thrilled to do. Dennis Davies was one of our original board members, uh, as was Dolores Johnson and um, Eric Stokes, great composer. Hooray, that we had a board, a board of three. Um, uh, and, um, and we had to ask each in person, as you do. We didn't even know you needed to develop relationships with board, potential board members. We just asked. Uh, and so we, we went to Dennis's house uh, to ask if he would be a board member. And uh, early in the morning, uh, well, 10 in the morning, uh, and, uh, and we knocked on the door. We went inside, and, and he wasn't there. Just Molly was there, and she, and she said, he'll be down in a minute. So we're like, so we're, we're nervous uh, and, and waiting for Dennis, who arrives in a red terry cloth bathrobe <laughs> and then sits in the middle of the couch and then asks us to sit, as Bill said, sit at his feet. Uh, and so, so we did, tr trying to understand what it is we were supposed to do. So we just kind of blurted out, will you be a board member? And, and he said yes and, and has been a great friend. Uh, ever since. But this is where I want to start the nascent years of the composer's form. It, about 40 years ago, actually a little more than 40 years ago, in the basement of Shevlin Hall at the University of Minnesota, which had a great cafeteria and made the best sticky buns in Minnesota, uh, composers hung out. We went there uh, and uh, took on the sticky buns and just drank a lot of coffee, and, and did what graduate students often do, be very intense and deep in conversation. And so there were many, many conversations over sticky buns and, uh, and coffee in Chevlin Hall. A group of us, and there was a good group of us, maybe 12, 14 of us, studying composition at the University of Minnesota at the time each with different styles. We had three very different uh, composition uh, professors, Eric Stokes, Paul Fettler, and Dominic Argento. We were spread out among them. Uh, and, um, and, we, and we often would get into conversations about our shared passion for, for doing the thing that is at the heart of the composer's form. And our shared passion was making shapes of sound in time and space in order to communicate what it's like to be alive. Making shapes of sound, and, and it's the craziest thing to do. But we all knew that we were meant to do this. And, we, and our discussions were about whether or not this was an essential part of human need. Not to make shapes, but to partake in shapes of sound in time and space. It's what we call music. And any kind, of, any kind of shapes. We, some of us were right down the middle of the road traditionalists. Some of us were experimenting with that newfangled thing called electronic music. Uh, uh, some of us uh, favored choral music. Some of us were only interested in percussion. Some of us were making sculptures, you know, and then reacting to those sculptures with our, with our musical instruments, just doing all kinds of shape making uh, and, and feeling very much alive and feeling that somehow this was essential to our culture. And so, as young, we were all quite young and full of sticky buns. Um, we, we came together around our idea and, and we thought that maybe we could do something about this. We were all passionate, all ready to just speak, speak out in the world. Uh, and, um, and so what we did is we gave ourselves an organizational umbrella and, and we called it the Minnesota Composers Forum. 
The next thing we did was to make some nice stationery. We thought it was nice. You saw an example of it. But, but, but we thought that if we could present ourselves in a professional way, that we could then call up anybody and say, I'm from the Minnesota Composers Forum and I'd like to speak with you. And, uh, and the fact that we had stationery would make us leg <laughs> legitimate. <laughs> I know, youth, it's just great. Um, and, uh, and, so, and so we did. So we made some stationery. First it was the beautiful stuff you saw. Later, uh, our wonderful Patty Paulus, who was uh, studying art at the time, it, you know, gave us something that was actually nice. Uh, um, in between that time, a very good friend of mine who has passed away, John Lowe, uh, who, um, who is, who is a, a nationally, was nationally re renowned display artist, cre creating displays for museums, uh, made a little stationery for us. But, but here's the thing, that in fact, we did call up people. And we did say, we're, we're come from the composer's forum, and we did show up looking like two drowned rats. Uh, uh, but but what, we, what we did is we had, the very first thing we did was to have conversations with people that we felt could, uh, uh, could uh, help us to articulate who we are. And we talked with Suzanne Weil at the Walker Art Center. And we talked with Philip Brunel, who was at that time with the Minnesota State Arts Board. We talked with Cynthia Maeda and Margaret Wordle and Linda Heschler from the Dayton Hudson Foundation and, uh, and Dale Warland and people, and, and we just thought uh, we have no idea if we have any value because of course we were all brought up in the school of the old dead white German busts. And, um, and, and, we, and we just thought, well, we know we have value, so we're gonna just have value. Uh, and we found, great delight in discovering that they were delighted too. Not in us, you know, it's always nice when you see young people with, with great enthusiasm, but in the idea of making new pieces of music of any genre. And, and suddenly, really within the span of about three years, we were further delighted to understand that we weren't the only people who felt this kind of energy. We were also delighted to find that performers just, just showed up, just showed up. Many of them professors at the university, many of them our dear colleagues, and we would pay them $5 a concert to play on our concerts at the Walker Art Center, wanting to pay for, for the professional uh, work that we were about. Uh, and concert producers, were just really intrigued with the idea. Um, uh, and we would produce concerts all over the place, really anywhere, anywhere. We, uh, and we even filled up a, an old truck one time and drove out to a park, I think in Bloomington, and, um, with a brass quintet and just put on a flat, what is now known as a flash concert. Uh, and conductors were interested, Bill McLaughlin, Philip Brunel, Dale Warland, Dennis Russell Davies, really interested in engaging in the music, in the idea of new shapes of sound in time and space. Radio programmers, so many wonderful friends, Tom Vagley, Michael Barone, uh, um, many, many, many uh, uh, radio personalities who said, come, you know, we'll figure out what we can do with this, all in a time when, when, um, <laughs> when uh, the music business was changing quite rapidly into a commodified uh, business. Uh, and, um, and, and publishers were interested in us. We were astonished that publishers would be interested in not us, but the idea of our making new work. Um, and teachers at all levels were interested in, in what we were doing and wanted to hear us. Um, and, uh, and arts writers so were, were interested in us. And audiences were there. And I, and I began to understand, and I think we all began to understand, that this business of making new, new music, new pieces, new ways of communicating what it's like to be alive actually is essential. And so for the past 40 years, everybody in this room, we're all here around this particular energy. It's a generative, creative, and joy, joyous energy. Uh, and, um, and it's one that I've been 
so proud to have kept time with everybody who uh, gathers around this energy. So proud. And, and I think that the next 40 years is a cinch. It, it, this, this energy is not going away. In fact, it's getting bigger and much more part of the culture, much more part of the culture. And that we have a group of us who continue to flow in and out of this particular forum is, is an amazing and wonderful and generative and creative force. And um, happy birthday to all of us. Thank you. <laughs>